Hey everyone, this is Richard Noto. I am a realtor in Winter Garden, Florida. I am also a home inspector in Winter Garden, Florida, as well as a notary public and loan signing agent. So the reason why I have all this stuff out in front of me right now is because I was giving it some thought. And you know, sometimes, especially if you're new, I kind of thought I'd, I'd put together a list for you of things that you would need for your first time you step foot into the house. Now this is kind of taking into uh, consideration that you haven't been there yet. So this is kind of like your first time, you're heading in there, you know, you're going to do some cleaning, you're going to get that place ready. So. So the first thing that you want is cleaning supplies. You definitely want to have that with you because the home is, pr is probably going to be uh, kind of dirty because the people that have been living there have just moved out. They probably didn't clean it up even though they're supposed to leave it in good shape, but they probably didn't clean it. If, if, if you um, purchase from a home builder, then the home builder should have cleaned it up, but still there's a, a ton of dust and stuff that you're going to be seeing for a long time after that. So you're still going to need to clean. So you're going to need your mop your broom, preferably one of those with a dustpan so you can sweep up the stuff. You're going to need a vacuum, some kind of spray cleaner, that's very important, and paper towels. Like to me, like that's the essentials right there. Number two, which is kind of the essentials as well, soap. You're going to need hand soap, soap to maybe hop in that shower or something like that. With that said, towels, toilet paper. Don't forget the toilet paper. That is just, that's something that, you know, something that when you show up and if you don't have it, it's not going to be good. Trash bags, water. Make sure you have your bottle of water or something with you, unless if you just like the water out of the tap. And a dust mask. One of these is fine for the basic house uh, dust. If you want something, for going up into an attic, I would not suggest a mask like this. Let me grab the mask and show you exactly what I mean. Sitting over here. I would suggest something more like this. The uh, plastic frame would probably cost you about $10 to $15, and these things would run you about, I believe, seven dollars for two of them or eight dollars for two and if you buy them in bulk they're cheaper but these things last quite some time and this basically filters out almost everything um, this is a p100 filter in case you're wondering but for just the basic household dust this is perfectly fine uh, let's see what's next where were we tools yes um, a basic set which is something that's right here. Let me take this away. And you got your basic stuff. You got your screwdrivers, pliers, hammers down here. Hopefully it doesn't fall out, which I think it will, but down here's your hammer. And a tape measure, because you know what? When you're in that house the first time, you're gonna to wanna to write things down because you're kinda of wondering where some of your stuff is gonna fit. So make sure you got your paper, your pen, or if you're gonna use your phone, and then you can measure okay so where were we hammer screwdrivers tape measure level a plunger the toilet you know you really have no idea exactly what might happen that first day and heaven forbid the last people that were in the house or home builder had some people looking at it or something crazy was going on that you didn't know and well they clogged it make sure you got your plunger with you Let's see, next thing is cork. So you want your basic household cork, but the cheap stuff, stay away from that stuff. Like when you see the stuff that's like $2 a, a tube, $3 a tube, it's gonna crack. In six, eight months, that stuff is just worthless. And especially if you're gonna cork around the baseboards in your house, which is the molding strips that are um, on the floor. If you're gonna cork that, you know, make sure you have the more expensive cork, like the $4 a tube stuff, you know, in your Lowe's or Home Depot. Uh, things that say that they're going to last for years, because otherwise you're going to be, you know, again, at it again in like six months or something, because it's all cracked. So let's say we got cork. I'm going to get my wand. Here we go. 
Now the cheap stuff covered that. Okay, now for the outside, your stucco. Now this is something that you're probably not going to need the first day. But you're going to want to pick up something like this. Okay, this is a special type that fills the cracks in your stucco. And it's just a matter of time. If you have a house that's stucco, you know, you're uh, going to need it at some point. Um, and it's good for small cracks because stucco just cracks. Now, keep in mind, sometimes the cracking could be something um, more serious. But typically, those little tiny thin cracks are just... It's just going to happen because it's stucco and stucco just tends to crack. Kind of like cement, concrete, it's concrete, it cracks. Uh, similar type of situation. So let's see, where were we? Back to the, the board. So the cork for the stucco. The next thing, number five. The house could have bugs. Uh, I like these pest traps right here. These things are fantastic. It's just a piece of paper oh, with some glue and you peel it off. You just come over here and you just peel this off and the glue's underneath it and you know, just put these down flat around your house and at night things come out, things crawl and you would be surprised how much it'll catch for you. So, and then anything else that you're going to need for your bugs because you know, who knows exactly what is in the house at night. Okay, so we got the bugs, light bulbs, LEDs are great, some kind of LEDs, um, pick up some of the small ones, some of the low wattage ones, um, pick up enough that you could put them in a room and, you know, see how well the lighting is. So what I'm saying is that maybe if you pick up like six of these and you're in a bathroom where you could put in the six, put them in, look at it, see how it is, um, and then take it from there. Uh, if it seems like it's too dim, you know, then you're going to head out and you're, you're going to pick up some more. But you could take those six bulbs then and head into other rooms where maybe there's a, um, a light fixture in the ceiling where it only has a place for two of the bulbs. Put it in, see how it looks, and do that for all the rooms in your house. And, um, you know, to me, that's probably the best way to save energy and to save on the price of the bulbs that you're buying. Because if you just go in and you buy everything that's like 100 watt bulbs, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, probably going to be too much for most rooms. Okay, so we got light bulbs. You're going to need a flashlight. Just in case, you never know again. Um, you know, you show up at the house in the evening and the sellers took all the bulbs. <laughs> and, you know, there you are. Or maybe they left you with a single bulb. That's always fun. It could have been, you know, a bulb or two. And now you're moving that bulb from room to room and you have to wait for it to cool down. But because it's nighttime, it's dark, and you can't see anything. So make sure you got your flashlight, and make sure you have a phone charger with you, because, you know, phones run out of charge, and you never know what's going to happen, and you might need it. And move this over here. Number seven, folding chair. You're going to have to sit at some point, I would think. Um, if you're going to possibly be there um, a long time overnight, make sure that you have a pillow, a blanket, or something that you could throw down in the meantime. You know, the first, uh, the first few days in a home, uh, whether it's a new home or you purchase a resale, it's going to take some work. There's some cleaning, there's things that are going to happen at night, you know, again, bugs. You could show up at the house. Um, in what is it of the daytime and you know everything's okay and then you come back at night and there's ants trailing around or there's spiders on the walls that you know just weren't there so something to keep in mind another thing I like and this is kind of something that's uh, a little side thing is these little felt pads I don't know if you could see that but these are those little little felt yeah, little felt pads and the reason for those those things are great for uh, cabinets and you could just stick them on like the handle in the meantime so that the cabinets aren't hitting the walls or if you hear something that's kind of like slamming like maybe uh, the rubber on the inside of um, a cabinet door is missing you could just take a little piece of that felt and just stick it on there so that it closes and so that uh, the wood isn't banging up against the wood so the felt pads are really nice to have I think that that covered pretty much everything that I had on my mind today, so I'm just looking it over. I think we covered it. Yep, that's it. So, 
Hopefully that video helped you, and if I could help you out in any way during your home search, please don't be shy. Contact me. You could send me an email. You could text me. You could call me. Um, I am no precious sales, so the home has to be right for you, and the home is going to sell you on your purchase, not me. And always keep in mind, one last thing, that if you're walking into a new home builder, remember, the fee for your realtor is included. Here in Florida, the builders have it in the marketing plan for them. So it's totally free for you. So if you use a realtor, it's going to cost you the same price as if you don't. But remember, the sales team in those um, uh, home builder offices work for the builder. They are there for the builder. And, and you'll probably notice something in the contract that even states that, that they are there to represent the builder's interests. Thank you, everyone.